Okay, everyone, welcome back. So I uh, worked on this, and I actually, and I state, restated them just a little bit more to pop them out, just to check that center. Added a few little darks and stuff to some of the cows here. The seam back here, I worked quite, I worked, I cooked two more layers. Here I put in just pure Hansa yellow, and then over here on this side, more of the uh, darulite yellow, then out into my yellow oxide, and out into yellow oxide, and a little bit of burnt sienna as I came out this way, building it, leaving just a little bit of that sun uh, coming through there. And I like it. I like it so far. I'm not quite sure on it, but I am liking it. But I need to get some more stuff further out here through the painting before I can check that. Worked on the horse, got a little bit of the light, the lights and darks like I showed you there. And I, I'm thinking I'm going to put a lighter, just a little bit lighter, cooler color right in here to build up this big, huge shoulder muscle that is on the horse. Now, I also put out here... One of the things that you've seen me use in other, in other paintings, I have my horse board and I have right over here my cow board, which I'm looking at some different cows. The confirmation, this, this, I'm not copying one, but this, this helps me see confirmation and they come from a bunch of different light sources like, um, that little, um, bay over there. Uh, that one, uh, you know, she is about the same light source and confirmation as what I want to put up here onto this white one. So it helps me see it a little bit better. So um, get yourself lots of photos, put them out. If you're, if you're creating your own story, get yourself lots of photos, put them out and, uh, you know, go from there. Let's go up and let's just put in some simple, bits here onto the um, onto the western here I mean onto the the writers now I love the way Reynolds does this this is Reynolds the way in which he does his writers very simplistic a lot of light to dark contrast and stuff and I like that look uh, he, he was such a great painter but his features and stuff that he did on his writers and stuff were sometimes uh, seemed a little bit too simplistic but when you step back from them they're really uh, really quite amazing so I like to have that as a an idea also and so I'm gonna um, you know do that so I'm gonna start up here with some burnt sienna maybe a little bit of blue I'm gonna use a small brush this is my uh, number two fusion filbert I you know, it's a lot of people may go to a liner brush or something like that. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to stay to a just a small. I like a small because I'll use the edges of it and the corners, and I'll give the place there for his ear. We're just going to keep the the stuff kind of simple as we state this. Maybe just a bit of extender. I like the paints. Now they've been out here for a while. They get sticky and stuff. And that's when I really like them. Especially when I start to go into some of these details and stuff. I like the stickiness of it. So this guy's head is kind of turned just a bit. So we'll pick up just a touch of the it into the back. And I just want to... I want to keep ever so subtle to the the you know everything here. So the light coming this way on this is uh, we're going to want that light to be light on this one edge here. So basically, like their faces, both their faces here are going to be almost in shadow. So I'll add a little more burnt sienna to make that good flesh tone. We just take yellow oxide and a little bit of red that makes that nice flesh tone, a little chunky white there. And then you can add a little burnt sienna to that to, to get a nice shadow. And I just might start out some of this, you know, since they're mostly in shadow, I might just paint back a bit of this light, putting their face into shadow here. And then we'll add just a touch of light for interest into their face. And but mostly that real soft. Now... He is, I want a little bit more clarity to him, and it's going to be hard unless I use, a, you know, a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, a real fine pointed brush. And so to do that, what I do is I'll overpaint him actually out into that background, and then I'll take a soft kind of a grade here, a bit of yellow, that mountain color, and I reverse paint him. So if I want to get some detail, see how this reverse painting him is an easy way to get details into him and then just drag it out a little bit here so we can get you know make his face pop off just a bit drag that color out touch it in a few other places of the mountains and it looks like you know what you're doing there it's a great way to uh 
reverse paint on small little characters like this. It's a, reverse painting them is a great way to to get the definition and you know blur some edges and stuff in here and uh, it so it allows you to get some details without getting tremendously bogged down in all of the details. Let's take a bit of darker, a little bit of blue, burnt sienna here. And you've seen me do this on countless little Western guys. I'll just like give the idea of some facial things of where the eye socket is, just a, a touch. And I know it's really hard to see, but you really don't need to see too much. I'm just tapping in just the idea. I'm gonna keep them mostly very simplistic here. And uh, here. Maybe just a touch here. There we go. Just like that. <clears throat> and uh, I'll drag, I'll drag some lights and stuff through there as well to hit just a bit of the light color here. So I'll go back, get some of that water out of my brush. And you know, I can always come back and add a little bit more detail to them if I want, but I don't want to get bogged down. I want to give suggestions here for everything. I don't, because they're far, they're actually quite far away here. So we just want to get a little bit, see here comes a little bit of that light that I can tap around to bring some of his face back here and give the suggestion of his face. And this one the same, maybe down here by the chin here, right up through here, push back his a little bit there for his uh, socket there. Leave a little bit there for the socket, maybe a touch more light right up onto that chin and stuff there, which might have it the uh, tip of his nose. But it's very, very soft, very small, very modeled. And don't try to do too much. That's the big thing. Let's take just a bit of this as a shadow, tiny little bit idea where his ear would be. Just a little paint back, just a touch. So I, and that's what I like to do is just keep them super simple, kind of like um, Reynolds would do. Now, see in Reynolds, he pops off those facial features even by having those mountains and stuff there just a little bit lighter and we, we could do that. So you, you look, you know, and this is one of the things I said earlier in this video, you look to the, when you're creating your own, you're not copying a photo, you look for those light, dark exchanges, those colors, those edges, and you plan for them. So I'll plan a darker exchange right out here against the light exchange of the mountains to really kind of set the, the shape and stuff here of, of these guys here. And I'm going to keep them very simplistic here. So this is a little bit too. I'm going to straighten this out just a bit here. And just a, just an idea there, see, of that. And, and a few times, and when you think you get close, rather than screwing it up, when you think you get close, then stop, go back, work on a few more things, and then come back, and you'll be able to see them a little bit more. So we're getting close there, so now let's go, let's go back and reset. Through our painting here, we'll reset some of our lights, and uh, where I might wanna have some of my lights and some of the shines here, and you know, through like on his vest here, we're going to have that sunlight hitting that. And uh, we'll go to maybe a little lighter, cooler. So there's the light. Here's my cool side over here. Maybe a bit of violet in there. But not exactly the same colors we used before. Change it up a bit. So here's a bit of that violet color coming in there. That's a pretty color picking up some. Oh, that's the other thing I did up here. I put some of that violet right up here, darken that sky over on this side. And I'm going to pull an even darker version, lighter, darker version of it here. So more values of it right down over here that will come into. Now that's a little too blue. So I can gray that with either a little red or a little burnt sienna. 
burnt sienna is good because it's so much in yeah see how that takes away that and we'll just touch a few areas there of that and uh we want and you know good harmony take it into a couple areas over here maybe onto this guy just a bit here and this guy can use a bit of the light strike yellow yellow oranges lights put in that light strike here up to his clothes here you know he's going to have a few areas of light strike here and you can see like i, I showed you before on uh reynolds and, and bill anton and all those the great western painters they go quite heavy quite quick light to dark here and that's what I want to kind of capture here as well. It's kind of hard, you know, if you're a, and, and a beginner and stuff, sometimes it's kind of hard to, to get that uh, real quick exchange of light to dark because we want to see things sometimes a little more soft. Uh, but boy, I tell you, it works. So I'll put in just a few areas here of light to dark hits. And that's what's really going to give you the look that they're in to where the light is and where the shadow is on the painting and I'll work this several times like I said before I'll work this several times until I get the you know like and it's a process you know sometimes I'll sit there and I'll go oh, I'll put that on and then I'll go mm, that's too much I'll paint it back and then after I put other colors on I'll go oh, now, now I gotta put it back on again but that process and you know something that my mentor told me a long long time ago is that uh, if you do that when you're working back and forth in a painting and you put something on and you want to go back and change it don't paint out what you did before 100 percent always leave it there and then you get these subtle little changes and this better if you've already working on it don't just paint out everything you've done before use it into the painting so and that's what I try to do so here I'm going to take a little blue over here to the cool a little bit of the burnt sienna which will make my uh and I want to vary these values over here and this is I'm still using my little number two here and I want to pull down and maybe grab a and see, I won't paint out everything that I did before. Let's grab a little more yellow, I mean, excuse me, the medium white and some of our white. And uh, let's just go right down there, push in some of that, that light. Now I could get, I, you know, I've got a lot of light on there so I could get some cool color in there as well. And I could have maybe just a touch of that showing up right there. Maybe that's his other shoulder right there showing up. And just a touch back up here along the edge of his collar there. Okay, but now let's add a bit more blue and a bit more uh, quinacridone here to make this a bit more violet, cooler color. And let's reset a bit of the violet here. Don't paint out everything you did before just set that light violet down in there like that. That's where his elbow is gonna be, where his arm is changing. And usually when you have that, let's take a little bit of violet, you'll have that a fold into his shirt. That's well, a little bit too violet. A little fold into his shirt here. Let's gray that. I always like that blue and burnt sienna is a nice gray here. A little fold right there where the elbow is where that's coming down and that'll work and some here just some nice dark move it all in here model that all up into your brush here and that'll help you with some of this you can round some of your strokes a bit but uh, we'll push that down there <clears throat> Maybe a touch more of that light right here down here. There we go. I want to have just a touch more light up here on this butt, on this edge here. And again, now I've taken it a little closer. Perfect. No. Let's go um, put a light strike though on that vest here down his side. A little bit more here down his side there and maybe a touch of the lighter 
grade violet. So I've got this blue and this other one we did. See now I'll touch just a few areas of this color. And that just gives a, a, a wonderful exchange. Probably a little too wide I need to. And I'll take a slightly different shadow color and just paint back slightly different angle. This is what makes the paintings. And up close it looks kind of bad, but further back you get, it looks it looks really nice. And so being able to do that, that but now I'm going to go real dark, blue, burnt sienna here and really establish a nice shadow over here. One reason why is that will really pop this arm forward and I can take a little bit of it into the arm here to set that back. But uh, that just really pops it over and see how it just gives a bit more definition. And so that definition, that, that 3D effect is going to come from that light dark exchange. Make sure you plan your light darks. Maybe just a touch of that right down in here. A touch of that right here. Just a touch, see? And it just, and it starts to add that spark. See the difference even between him and him. He starts to get these little touches of color and sparks of color. That is that's where the interest is going to come from. So I'll start to add little sparks of things and that just starts to decorate him up. So <clears throat> we'll come, let's take some, even some of that raw sienna yellow oxide, that beautiful color that we used into the ground and stuff here. And see, this is just my number two here still. And I'll use it kind of flat. We dropped that in earlier here on his chaps. And I have a little bit of blue in there. See that blue is just coming off right now. And that's cooling that off. And see how that, you know, when you use your brush like this, especially these little fusion brushes, they're soft and it just happens really easy. You can, it can do some of your painting for you here just by allowing that to happen. And then let's take maybe not quite so light. So we'll get a, I mean, so yellow. We'll get a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of that medium white in here. It'll go more to a tan color. So it's not quite so yellow. And let's just drop a bit of that in like that. And maybe a uh, even a little light here. Use the brush up here over onto its corner, turn it, and then that'll make the, like the little edge of the chaps there. So see, all of a sudden you're starting to get this bit of detail. Now you could put a little more shadow right there, or you know, right up in there, maybe a little burnt sienna and blue, maybe a little violet with that so it's cooler. You want some dark shadows in there to help pop it forward. So let's push just a bit of dark shadow right here. See, and you can push. I don't want to. I don't want to blend. I want these to push together there a little bit in the color. See, but I don't want them to blend because then that'll make it too smooth. So I want to get these color exchanges. It's a little different, you know. I. One of the things like, you know, you know I like Sargent, right? John Singer Sargent. We talk about painting him all the time with our portraits and stuff. And what he always said and what I always say to use as large a brush as possible for a color passage. But he also said one thing that I use all the time. And he said, use your brush like a pencil. So the, what the marks that I go in here and create is I'm using the, my brush like a, almost like I was sketching it again, see? And that's a good reason why we need to, and myself included, we need to always practice our sketching because, you know, that's because that sketching becomes part, sometimes part of the technique of the painting here. So we'll just drop that in there like that, see? Now that might be a bit too light, and I knew that putting it on, but I can always take a, another little mark, see, and drop it right down push that over there like that and that just creates a bit more interest there now he's going to have um, his blue jeans there here we'll so we'll take a little bit of our violet and blue here and if it's you know too bright take a little of that burnt sienna in there that'll gray it down or even a touch of that red the blue and red make a gray and see how that just grays that down Let's, we had it a little brighter earlier, but let's just try this. More in the shadow. Could have a, a touch more um, violet in it. Okay. Touch more violet. So you see the technique that I... Yeah, that's pretty... That works. So the technique I use in painting them here 
just like the technique I use in the mountains, just like the technique that I use up here in the sky, is I'm not painting a wet edge. I'm not keeping a wet edge. I'm painting a tone. And so what's very important about that tone is you try to stay and have your value, those you're newer. You know, if I'm putting a six on, I try to go no lighter than an eight when I'm going to a highlight and no lighter than or darker than a four. I step down. So you can sit here and put in a real dark down in here, but you're gonna need something to soften it. And see, even like this, this color that I just put on here, a little bit of this violet, that might look good. Carry that violet, a little touch of that. See, and just break that edge, maybe just a, a just a half a value lighter here. Let's just grab some all this dirty, some of it's drying up and it's all great. It's all good color. And I'll just drag that right over that edge, see? With that little brush like that. See, it gives that little fractured edge and it starts to soften it. Rather than going in there and blending a wet and wet like the oils, and for me, this kind of technique that the Western Western painters and stuff use and stuff and a lot of uh, Victorian floral painters use, the oils would stay wet too long and you would always, each time if you touch it too much, the colors lose their identity and they blend. And so here they don't, you know, and I can soften that like I showed you before. I can come in and soften something in there if I want, but I like these color exchanges. That's what I, this is what I'm building. So like, after this dries down here, maybe I want to have a little bit more of a spark of that light right here on the edge of this guy's vest right here. A little bit more of a shine. Doom. Right there. Take it across just a bit, a tap or two. You see, and I got just a, a bit more of a shine. And I like that. Now see, if I was painting in the oils, in the years that I painted with the oils, I'd put that on. And then sometimes I go back and touch it just a minute and it blends out. And see, I like the acrylics that immediately dry. I can put that spark on like that. And it's, I know it's gonna stay there now. And it's gonna dry pretty quickly. And I want it to dry pretty quickly so I don't mess it up later on. So I'll put another little spark of that light there, just like that. And you can see now, I, and I'll come through and I'll push a bit more of that light and that spark maybe right up here onto his hat here. Gotta lean in there just a bit, tiny. Get a bit more yellow into that. And so, you know, I'll hit some of those edges there onto his hat. Start to put that on cooler color, lighter colors. <clears throat> and I can see, I can... While I'm doing that, that flesh, his flesh tone dried down just a bit much. So I'll just go back, add a little lighter flesh, just a little bit of paint in my brush here, and just come back and whisper over that just a bit to, where's his cheekbone? That's a big forward part of him there, working on that cheekbone and stuff and bringing that face up. Now that's gonna dry down, you're also going to have that shadow, cast shadow coming basically over his whole face here because of the light. You'd see the hat and that would come right across this whole area. So we have a bit more that we need to, to do on him. But that's how I'll do it. Just working those colors like that. Maybe a soft little blue, blue gray right into his hat here. Just a bit of that. That'll come over that can come up over here onto this guy as well. A little bit of those colors. And so I'll work those. And so I'm going to uh, turn around and do some of that. I'm gonna, and I'll paint this guy exactly the same way. I'll start adding some of these little details in here. And I'm just gonna use a small brush and I'm gonna do more, mostly like I'm drawing it, sketching it and using little tones you know, to come in and, and soften that, you know, come in and soften that area that I'm working on. So I'll do that, then we'll come back and I'll set some cows and set some of the ground and then we'll start some of the details, okay? So I'll show you a few clips along the way as I paint some of this and uh, we'll get this thing done, okay? All right, I'll see you in just a minute.
Hey everyone, welcome back. Okay, so we got some of that in, and you can see I still have more details to put in here, but I get a, a good idea of light and dark and how I want to do it. I'm going to add more, but as I add details and stuff, everything's going to change as you add more and more color. So it's good to take it to one point and then move on. Now, let's come out here and work on some of the cows. Now, you can still use the synthetics, but sometimes I, this is what I like to go to, it, excuse me, use the fusions. So these are the fusions that I use and the 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 uh, kind of gray and black haired ones they're very very soft the synthetic is a little bit more springy it's not as springy as a bristle okay the bristle is the most springy at all so sometimes I'll paint this these um, outsides and cows in some areas with a bristle sometimes with the synthetic sometimes it's a fusion my favorite of all is the fusion I could paint the whole painting with the fusion you see me do that several times but also, when I do portraits and stuff, like sometimes if I'm going to come in here and want to leave a lot of marks, in other words, just straight marks, I'll use the synthetic, okay? So, and the synthetic works really well. Let's go in and paint a couple cows so you get an idea. We won't paint all of them together. You, you'll get the idea. The light's coming from the back, so her face and this little calf's face is going to be in shadow, so we've got to set that up. And... Uh, We'll use, we have our warm colors, and which is our medium whites and whites. Now let's cool that down. A little bit of violet goes into this. This will start to cool it down. And now my paints, you know, they've been out. I've had this palette for quite a long time. And they've been out for a little bit and they're sticky. Here's a little open medium I can add to this. I like the violets. I'm going to be varying the violets with grays. So how do you gray it? A little more burnt sienna. Before I start my final details, I may want to reset my palette. But here's just a modeled up gray, beautiful little gray. And that's what I'm going to look at doing here, is putting in some of these gray colors. And see, I'll use different parts of my brush here to push that in. See, you get some of those little different tones. See a little blue came out there? Fine, that works. Let's warm that ever so slightly with a, a bit of our, our burnt, burnt sienna. Put a different look at look. See, that's a, and I'll pull down the edges. I'll try to get some different tones and stuff in here on her face. Now let's warm because we're going to come around the corner here towards the warm side. So let's just put a little a mark here of warmth here on the side of her face here, and see that little bit of brush calligraphy there. I'll leave that. I'll leave that. Maybe a touch of. Light comes up here on the other side of her ears. <coughs> Excuse me, up there. Maybe a bit more white light. And we're going to hit some yellows up here as we get to the right up there by her horn. Some uh, light maybe coming down the side of her muzzle, her nose here. A little bit different shape here. I, I like to kind of rectangle them off a bit and uh, I get a better look to my cows when I do that. Now, let's go back, let's use white, we'll lighten up some of this cool color. I don't want to warm it up too much, I want to leave this over here a little bit more cool and we'll push, that's a little too low into her eye here, so I'll push that back. But see now look, see the colors that we're developing in there. That's what's going to give her ultimately this great interest. Slowly changing, let's darken that just a bit here. Slowly changing those tones, leading some, leaving some of these tones. This is what makes a, a really good tone painting. Uh, and, you know, technically we call this a la prima, even though I've had to stop a couple of times because of my back still, you know, is bothering me. And, um, you know, just, just time, things happen and stuff. And this is a long painting. Uh, I try to do, I you know, if I'm in good condition, I could do a painting like this in one day, no problem. But uh, a la prima means you do it all at once so your feelings don't change. And you change from day to day. So, um, you know, you your feeling will change. But you you try to paint it all in one setting, and that's the, the best way. I'm just going to add a little bit more softer tones in through here. And I'll start to shape her up a bit more here. Let's take some... Uh, 
let's get that shadow just a little bit more and then we'll lighten it up that's how i like to paint i you know generally will work the shadow let's get a grayer shadow here violets and some of this uh burnt sienna to gray it okay we'll get a little bit of a swoop here because that's what happens in her nose here here we'll get a bit of that swoop there so we'll shadow back a bit more maybe a touch and stuff up here and vary those colors vary those tones a little bit more burnt sienna warm it up a bit see it's a little different color i like that boom right down in there like that let's get a nice flesh toned even our our raw sienna up there tiny bit of red here right across the front of her nose her muzzle there that's a nice flesh tone. You can do a couple of, once you understand this, you can do a couple of these cows at the same time, which, you know, uh, is really a best, the best idea. I should really do a couple of these cows at the same time because that's the quicker bit of it. You know, we could just touch in some of these colors here. And, uh, you know, through, through all of them here, you know, this would all work. Use a bit of this tuck this tone in here right in there and start all you know change it up a bit you know if you use that tone carry it in a couple of other areas carry that tone around that's what I like to do now so we set that up in and let's go in and and set just a little lighter sometimes lighter sometimes just a bit warmer now we'll set just a bit of the, the shape or pull there of her face and maybe a bit more here right up onto that edge of that eye socket there so <clears throat> it's still a little cool over there which is what I want we can go a touch lighter but I can't set a final light over here until I set what how light her her the light strike side of her face is going to be so I'll push that in Maybe even just go with a little medium white right into this so it does warm it up a bit. Push in a bit of that curved bit. But see, leave some of that shadow. Leave that shadow. And see how now how much color is all in there. And that tone is matching some of this other tone that you're seeing throughout the painting. And that's what I want. Now let's come back in. Let's go white and medium white here. Mostly medium white up towards a light strike area, which might be right up here. And let's get that in here. Rough, in the, rough those edges. See how I rough those? The, I don't like that super smooth. So I'm gonna ruffle up and sometimes I'll even, just like I do with the fusions, I'll even, cause this will leave a rough mark, is I'll pull down just like that. See, it, it's a little rougher than what the fusion does, which I like. You know, and, and it gives just a bit more interest. So, so look at how much interest that starts to generate over there. We can use a maybe a half tone that's right between the violet and right between this light to kind of finish off a little bit of the light strike here on the low side here of her face or just work in just the tip of the brush and work a couple marks here so it's not completely perfect. Okay, and let's take a darker gray now, violet. Now, why I'm going to do the shadow here on her chest of this color. So I want it really, I have it light there. So I want to push that back a bit. See how that really pops her face forward. Then maybe a little medium white. Sometimes white, which will keep it super cool. Sometimes medium white, which will warm it slightly, but still keep it cool. And let's just push in a little shadow right there like that. See? And that's how I like to do it. I'll push. I'll push and roll the brush. Let's get a little light there. Push and roll. Tap that brush and we get some of those different marks there. And out here on the cows, that's what makes it look really great. Maybe a bit of our... That, that one violet out here is a bit cool. So let's just touch a, a touch of burnt sienna into that and just warm that just a touch let's push some of that shadow though right back out here restate that again see more colors more light 
Then we'll just, and see, it's an easy way to paint. I'm not blending anything. I'm dragging the brush here. See, and creating these marks, these nice casual marks. Now you could, now if you want, you know, this more realistically, then you, yes, you can. You can, you know, um, use your brush more on the tip and your color's a wet edge so that you blend just slightly. You know, but I just love these casual paintings like this that are set up like this. This is one of the favorite ways I like to present, uh, present them. Let's put a bit of light right out here. See, I, I like this. That's what that, uh, that's what that little synthetic does. It's a really nice job of doing that here. Let's, uh, maybe a bit gray. Push some of that in. So it's just kind of like I'm looking up here at my cowboys <laughs> up here to see, ah, uh, see some different markings on some of the different Herefords and, and stuff and just kind of grabbing some of the colors. I'm going to need to get some more burnt sienna out there. Here. I'll blur some of those edges sometimes just like that. That sets up that softer edge there. And uh, get some of these darks here. It's a little too blue. So a little bit of burnt sienna, a little bit of violet here. That's a prettier tone. And just see, uh, sometimes I'll push that wet edge and just push that together. But I don't, I don't want to hang around there too long pushing that because that'll uh, blend them too much here. So just keep it going. Keep your, keep your brush going. Keep your colors going here. And uh, let's get a bit darker violet here. Right up here in the front. Just nice dark because that's just... Uh, Right, she's right in shadow there completely. And so this nice super dark will help bring her forward right there, see? And but, but and this is what I gotta do. I can't, I'm real close to this dark here, so I might wanna lighten that up a bit. Now why? Because it, it's, it pulls your eye away from over here just a bit. So as I lighten this up, and so I start to watch this, I'll start adding just a touch of light into this gray here. And I'll start lightening her back up, that deep shadow I just put on. And so you notice it now, but your eye is darker back over here. That's what I kinda, that's what I'm kinda looking for here, is I don't want to, I want her to have that nice shadow, but I don't want it to take away from what I'm doing over here in the other parts of the, of the painting. So that's really a good, some burnt sienna, some of these grays, some of the lights. These are all really nice colors, nice gray colors of the cow here, of her, that I will now start painting just shape following marks here. And that nice uh, violety gray here. Remember, you can also go over to the done colors, add a little bit of green, which is not bad because you those are the colors that are on that other horse. So bringing some of those colors in right over here, that's a little dark. See, that will pull your eye right over there. So I might even add just a touch of the medium white to that, which will help gray that up even more. See how that grays that. But there's some of the done colors, see, from that horse pulled over there gives you a, a really nice look to it and so you can take some of those maybe push those over into here a bit to some of those other cows and everything and you get a nice look so we'll continue on with this a little bit of our burnt siennas and some yellows just make some of our warmer tones coming down through here a bit that's pretty good and uh, lighten those up with just a touch of the medium white we'll push in the and calligraphy I'm watching the calligraphy the shoulder the rounding shoulder of that cow there maybe a 
bit more medium white, maybe a touch of that nice yellow, because we have to put in that sun strike up here as well, up there. And uh, then back down into some, and see, I'll just use this brush sometimes on the side and just push around like that, because I don't like to, I don't want this all super mixed up here. I like the modeling of these tones. And so she might have this, she has this big shoulder muscle here. We can help to define that right there. And then uh, pull the side of her neck here a bit. Here, there we go. And uh, yeah, just start to find their calligraphy, their shapes, the muscling of them. and where shadows would be, you know, shadows form between the, the muscle structures and stuff. So just kind of find some of those shapes. There we go. Just like that. So she's starting to, to come forward here. And uh, they do have a big, let's get just a, I'm going to have to squirt out some more burnt sienna. That nice big shoulder muscle here, right here. So I want to bring that out just a bit more. Maybe a little bit of medium white. Some of that done color so it's not too, too bright because it's in shadow over here. There. Get that shape. And then a little bit lighter, maybe a bit more burnt sienna, a touch of yellow, a little lighter up here as we get up in here. There. And I might repeat this a couple times. I've only got a couple of, of um, you know, the big cows here. You know, I've got a calf and a couple of big cows so that, you know, the rest of them I'm just painting colors so that uh, the viewer will picture them as cows, but I'm not going to paint them, paint them. So let's um, get a little bit of blue and burnt sienna here. And just real simplistic eye here. Their eyes are kind of small, so real simplistic. I'd like to really get, I got it a little too blue. I like a touch like you see me in so many others of the burnt sienna to actually happen in there as well. So that keeps them a little bit more friendly. We can use a bit of that burnt sienna and stuff here into this curved part of their nostrils right in here. Here. Okay. And uh, we might as well, while we're here, even though this little guy here isn't ready for it, might as well just touch one in. Here. Sometimes you get those eyes in there and they get a little bit of character, which is kind of fun. And let's just take a little grade. Not exactly the same, because we don't want to always be exactly the same. That's a little dark. Maybe a bit of blue into that. Here. Yeah, a little more light. I'll get it. Sometimes it takes a second, maybe a touch more blue here, and a little bit more light. Find this and push that, yeah, that's kind of a pretty little gray here, onto that side. Some burnt sienna and stuff up here. See, I like to push that brush around. That. Uh, really gives you a, a nice casual look, especially into the little ones because they're all hairy and all well, they're, you know, really wild in the, the hair and stuff still as they're young. Here. Let's get some of that grayed color right down into his little chest there. And, uh, yeah, so, you know, model back and forth at some of this light, some of this blue. Get some strokes of that. See all the different colors 
that come off there. That's what we're kind of looking for. We can come a bit lighter right up in here. And I like the top of this is a little stiff and that's where I like it that paint is stiff because it'll lay off stiff here. And that's what I like. It gives a different type of a mark there. I like that. So let's just shape up his head here just a bit. There. Cute little guy. A little bit more light. I'll have to put on that side of his face there a bit more. Side gray. There. Do you see him start to come forward? His eyes now painted it. It's just a touch small, so we could increase that ever so. And see, I just use the same brush. I just use a corner of it. And the thing is, I'll make him a bit big here so you can see. I'll take it, and if I get it too big, this is what I like to do. I'll paint back up into it to, to reduce it down. That's the, the way I like to do it. As a matter of fact, we can uh, paint this shadow, or little shadow right here a little bit more. Right there. There we go. Right there. So you see her coming together there. She's going to have, um, and I'll go back and forth between these guys here. We'll bring her nice curved little horns forward here. Right up there. And um, her little horn up here. It's good. And we'll get that shadow up underneath there. But so you get a good idea, I think, in looking at this, how I go about painting it. It's almost as if I, you know, uh, if you could describe this type of way, and it's like Sargent does, even though you, you could use it, oils and all that stuff, it works really nice with the acrylics. And you're just kind of drawing with your brush and putting in tones. And I try to generally stay close enough into the tones and slowly get them darker, slowly get them lighter. But, and sometimes I'll jump right in, put in that shadow and then lighten it up with what we call the half tone. And if you're not sure what the half tone and stuff is, just put in the search bar of my videos and I think half tone. You'll see I paint roses and everything and I explain what half tones are and how you go about setting half tones. And it doesn't make a difference if you're a, a landscape painter, a western painter, a floral painter. Learning how to do the tones is so important. So very important. That's what makes us the, the artists, is learning those tones. You know, so let's just grab a bit of that there, like that. That's pretty good. So that's basically how I'm going to work these cows back and forth. I'm going to continue on here so we don't make this video seven hours long here. Um, I'm going to uh, work this for a few minutes here back and forth using this brush. Work some of them in there. I'll show you a few clips along the ways, along the way there. And use this as your benchmark, what we call our benchmark, this area right in here. This is about as dark as we want to get, and so we'll go through, not make it too much darker in there. You can come close to it, and if you get it too dark, then we just come back over with the tone and lighten it up. I'll show you those for a few minutes, and then we'll come back and work some details, and then into the ground, okay? All right, see you in a minute.
Hi, everyone, and welcome back. I had to stop. My back was killing me. I'm sorry. I'm almost over this, but I can't sit here at the easel still yet. Those of you that didn't know, I hurt my back uh, over a month ago and uh, trying to avoid surgery on this right now. So anyway, I had to stop on that, and uh, I, then I reset my palate, and then I came back in uh, this morning, and I decided to make this cow walking here, So I this little calf walking, so I brought his leg forward, changed his leg up, and thinned up this one just a little bit, put some more light back through here. Just working on some small things uh, through the painting here development. And it really is just uh, balancing the colors, going back through again, balancing the colors. I might put some more light up on here, but we're gonna go into details. And some other things that I wanna do is I really wanna bring the viewer in here and come up this way into the light, which means I'll leave this kind of this tan color, but I want to focus in a little bit more of the sunset colors coming through right up in through here um, and get some of those big colors on. Keep the ground, like I said, I want to lead in what's called a, you know, it's like what Richard Smith does with his paintings called drawing in. Um, and uh, James Reynolds does it, and a lot of artists, a lot of Western painters do it. So draw the viewer in this way a little bit, softening some of this out, banging some of this out. Uh, we have a lot that that we can do. So what I'm going to do is, as I'm working this, maybe a three quarter or a one inch uh, brush. This is my my uh, my one inch. Let's just try that. Work big as brush as possible, right? Let's take a little bit of extender some of our yellow let's first come in there yellow burnt sienna and some white more than the even the medium white and let's deposit some of that real warm right up in here now i want to create that high contrast here and and up into this area here so um we'll get that into the ground some of this around real loose um not super thick paint uh, but just kind of loose. I'll, I'll put in some bushes, that kind of stuff, a brush coming in here, maybe a little open medium. Change the feel of it up a bit here. And we'll bring this shadow down just a bit here. Probably have to use a smaller brush in some of that. But the values are real close together, and this is the thing. Uh, the values here of what of the colors that I'm putting on and what I have here already are real close together. In other words, they're almost the same lightness to it. So they'll soften out. They'll they'll look uh, they'll look pretty uh, harsh right now, but they will soften out. And that's the one thing that I've noticed over time of painting, especially as I've tried to become an artist that has more contrast in your painting, that you want to like really zip it in there because it's going to dry down. Okay, so be be brave. Be brave with what you do. Be brave. So let's just push some of that out. Some of this out a little further. Now we'll go into some medium white. Maybe a touch of our um, burnt sienna here. As we come out through here, leave some of those violets and stuff that we have. And we're just going to, let me thin some of this out as well here. Thin, thin. So... As it comes back up over here, we want this to uh, to soften out. So we may come back with some violets and stuff in here as well, but we want to state it a couple times. Take some of this. Let's just whisper over some verticals and some horizontals here. Whisper over this a bit. Push that common color there. And, but it's a... Not as bright quite yet as we have out there in the front, but we got to get some more paint on some of this. That's the thing. Get more paint on here. Some of that yellow, some of that stuff there. Get more paint going. Let's get a little bit lighter, maybe a bit brighter, just a touch right up in here. And, you know, I have some bushes and stuff. We're going to reset the shadows and stuff, but just a bit here. I love using that paper towel. I want this be just kind of prairie grass kind of thing. So you've seen me do this, uh, you know, in all of my westerns and stuff a hundred times. I'll use the brush. Um, th I also use this brush a lot to come in here and work some of those individual grasses. I don't think I'm going to do, 
because I want this all to be about the sunset. So I don't want to get too much, but I want a little bit of vertical and horizontal movements here. And then I'll calm some of this down with some nice horizontal brush marks, which will put in the planes here. But I want to, um, let's get a little light with that and some of this just around. Some of this soft, almost like little grasses and stuff here. Just little verticals, little verticals. Just roll your brush, get different edges here. This is the Fusion Flat. You could also use that little pastry brush I've showed you before. You could use a knife like I've showed you before, but we want to keep it kind of soft here. Kind of soft, but build that just a bit in there. Um, we could focus in on some shadows as well, or a little green color, or a little bit of the green and blue kind of colors here. Some of this coming through here, a little softer, little bits. And, you know, on a big painting, like I did that uh, um, one, that real big painting, there's a big Western that I did here with you this last year. I spent quite a bit of time on the grasses stuff. Here, I don't. I want your eye right in here. So I don't want to, I want to give up enough, I want to give enough here that's going to make a nice, interesting painting. Movements, verticals, horizontals, some bright colors, a few bits of tone color here. But I don't want to get uh, wild and crazy with it here. Now let's get um, some, I want to take some of this, bird, to, uh, a burnt sienna, a little bit of green, a little bit of blue, some yellow, even some red. All these colors here, some violets in here. And I want to I want to create just a, a variation of the shadow, maybe soften this slightly. So I want to soften this shadow and put some of this shadow back in, back and forth a bit. So we're going to gray up this shadow light. Let's thin it out, okay? And because remember, it should be a little bit transparent. We'll work some of this over some of this. Because remember, these are all grasses and stuff and all kinds of stuff going on. Let's bring it right up next to him. Bit of that shadow walking out here, right out here. And blur those edges so that there's like grasses and stuff coming up there. You can pull across a bit to see, just get that nice, nice colors, variation of those colors here. And we want to put some of the grasses like up over the hooves or I'm going to have to paint hooves. So push some right in there, some of this right up in here. Have some of this out here into this one. Out here, soft, just touches of these colors here. Maybe right out in here. Here, look where you would have those shadows, see? Now, so you put that on and you can see that real deeper, darker, maybe a bit more blue here, a bit more blue, a bit more violet, that purpley kind of color, a bit more right up in here. This is our main interest area of the painting okay now we got to break that up we don't want this this solid band of color here so you want to break this up a bit and let's just take some of this yellows and stuff like that and we'll add some of the movement of like what would be the grasses in there while this is wet so it softens it down a bit here So you get these you get these real lost and grassy type edges here. That's what I'm looking for. It's not perfect. Here, change the color up a bit. Here, just lots. I find with the shadows, shadows are real are super important in a painting. They were super important, and so. It's something that I'll paint quite a bit because, you know, and for many years I would forget to add these cast shadows and they're so important to help set objects down on the ground. They, uh, you know, set the interest area of the painting. 
They give you a lot of depth. Here we're going to set the interest area quite a bit with these. With these uh, kind of grasses and these shadows here. See? I've worked quite a bit, so I've just added some more yellows and stuff to these shadows here. We want to bust, like if you had that on the edge of the shadow, see the grasses up here would be heading right up to the sun here, and then the shadow would be picking up. So you'll drag some of this, and likewise up onto the front edge here, likewise a few little bits of these, of these grasses and stuff will come up and break these edges because tall grasses will stand up a bit higher there like we've shown you before now let's just restate a little bit of darker blue and violet here blue violet a little bit of burnt sienna here a little bit of that red violet nice dark cool color in there right up yeah, see, nice deep, little deeper shadow right up there by them. Got quite a bit on the hooves, so. But we're gonna kind of bring those together here. And so we don't have to, cause I like to, I do like to bury my animals' hooves into the grass, cause that's what they happen most of the time. Now I have others that I've painted, where you paint them all out there. Uh, you know, where you uh, put all the hooves and stuff on there, but you don't always need that here you can add a few little touches but not much you can just get that color out here just get that color but softer just a bit here just some movement here like this take some of it off just keep it soft just nice just little bits of this movement here there into those yeah, like that. Maybe a touch of this dark right up over here. It keeps that nice cow here and shadow over there. A little bit more over here, right up there. And just and see, I just I like that brush and I use different edges of it and poke and drag, and because I keep those nice verticals in there for to emulate the grasses and stuff there. Maybe a bit. Maybe, uh, and go back, touch your grasses again here and there. You know, touch some of those grasses. Get some of those in there. Work some of those grasses. A few little spots of them here are really important. Breaking that up a bit. And of course, you know, it's, it's all how much time you want to spend on this. You know, I feel like this, that you don't need... Oh, I like that spot of yellow. Sometimes those accidents happen, you just got to go for it. Let's take some of that yellow. But I, I like, uh, you know, to, to work these... Yeah, that's a nice spot of yellow. Hits that evening color there. A little bit of dialyte, a little bit of yellow oxide. Smaller brush here. This is my eight... Just using it on the side, touching a few areas there, grabbing that color there. And yeah, just carries that color maybe a little bit. I said I wanted to draw that color out. So kind of draw that color, that color in here. We don't put it over here because we want the viewer to come into here. And if we want the viewer to come in here, maybe even hit a little bit of light. I'll just add a touch of white with that and hit a bit of that light. That's all up to you. See, you could build more. I could build more, but how much am I going to do until I start to uh, take away there from the horses? That's going to be your, your call. And every single one of us will visualize that a little different. And, you know, just go for what you feel on it. There's not a... When you're painting like this, there's not like a real correct way to do it. It's just the ideas, you know. I've had them where they put on a a whole bunch of, you know, rabbit grass and stuff like that in here. I've done that a lot, putting in rabbit grass and everything. And then I've had others like this that I do just, just more impressionistic, and I like that. Well, let's come over, and uh, I wanted to do a burnt sienna and yellow kind of uh, chest strap here. And uh, we'll we'll maybe give it a burnt sienna and and um, 
bluish kind of color here for the for the stops I mean for the um, the shadows and stuff so burnt sienna and so the chest strap is going to come right up through here it's going to drop down I just want to keep this very simplistic sometimes you see me paint these quite a bit uh, and I want to gray that just ever so much just a, but just a touch of blue but sometimes you see me paint these and let's go back up over his shoulder here and and then up into that strap i just blur that edge sometimes you see me paint these really quite detailed and sometimes you see me paint these really simplistic like this the broken brush the, the broken color edges of it and i like that as well i like both of their, their ways a little bit of shadow even some of that shadow of the grass a little bit of blue here Give it a bit of a shadow line, bit of the edge there of the very, very simplistic, um, maybe a light blue, gray, kind of a, you know, the ring that joins all of those together, those three parts together there. You can have just a little blue and blue and white and, and burnt sienna make a good kind of silvery color can have a idea of that maybe a little light yellow don't even take the blue out of my brush here just to hit a few areas of that and it's how much detail like there would be a little uh, ring that goes right here mine's on the front of my saddle right up there and uh, maybe a touch of shadow and, you know, like I've told you before, I do, when I do a lot of these details, I do a lot of the drawing. Small brush, I'm using a number two um, synthetic filbert to draw, but I do, I just like I'm going to draw again with my pencil. That's how I like to do it here. Just like I'm going to draw with my pencil and uh, to get those details. That's what I like the best. So mostly burnt sienna, a dark, a little bit of blue to darken it down when you come up to the um, to the uh, shadow side of it and stuff. And most of this will be up into the shadow side. Very simplistically, we can uh, put on, uh, you know, the idea here of that. We'll just give him a ear band here and just real simple down here. Blur that just a bit. And you can, uh, you see, I can do that and I can correct it up. Let me get my little bar here. I can correct it up just with the chisel of this and just drag. Every once in a while, hit a little shadow, see? And you get some highs and lows in it. And it's a, it's a little bit better. We can give him a, I'm going to give him just the ear part here. And uh, we can even give him a throat blotch here, so drop that in and whether or not you I mean all different kinds some people say well you don't give them nose bands I don't give it the nose band very often here I mean I rode mine all the time without I ride mine all the time without a nose band but there's all different kinds of ways I'm just gonna simplistically here just tap around and maybe a little white touch of blue with this right here and we'll just give a just a highlight kind of in the shape of what the, you know, the kind of bit that you want to have there. And uh, maybe a bit of that here. Bit of that there onto that one there. Just a, I'm going to keep this really simplistic more than anything else. I don't want to get too detailed here. So right to here, right to here right up here shoom right and uh, just simple little reins here have a idea maybe that's you won't see it because of the shadow but maybe you'll pick up a, a bit more of that and that's too curved that does not look good like that and let's take a this is a nice little eraser color <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you go back, you make those mistakes, and you go back and forth and stuff with those colors. It just gives it a more painterly edge, which is kind of nice. There we go. That's better. And uh, you can 
you know, take some of this light, little yellow, little light. You wouldn't really have too much of a highlight here unless it gets right back up here. You can hit maybe a little bit of a highlight here. Just see, I just dragged the edge, the ferrule of that brush. And I know it's pretty hard to see. Um, the ferrule of that brush is just hitting the edge of it there. And it just gives you a nice little broken edge line there for your reins and stuff. And if you find, I mean, if you want to narrow them down, those are pretty good size. Um, if you want to narrow them down, you can just take a little bit of water in your brush and do this. See how I'm narrowing it, slowly narrowing it down. A little water in your brush, because water is your solvent, and this is really, really soft. And so rather than worry about getting a super fine line, I paint it back out. You could use the horse color, but if you use water just like that, you can just take that out. Quite easy. And, you know, if I'm doing a real de detailed commission piece, I might tap a little bit more around there. You know, it's, it is all how much time you have, you know, to do your painting. Now, if you're not a professional artist, you're painting because you just love the paint. Like, I love to paint and stuff, then you might want to put a little more work into that. But uh, that's all up to you. So then we'll come down here. There's certain things we can't forget, like uh, we've got to put the this guy in his stirrups here. And uh, maybe, and it, most of it I'm just going to draw burnt sienna, a little bit of blue. Uh, just draw the, just redraw kind of the shapes and stuff there and give the impressions of it. And movement, you know, uh, I'll create movement with just a flat of the brush here coming down like this, the edge of it, chisel edge, tap it, turn it over, put down a little bit more, just create some of that idea of the movement, maybe a little darker here, here like this, just an idea of the stirrup there. You could get it a little heavy, you could take some, maybe a little lighter yellow, here, if you want to get a little bit more defined of an edge, see, you can push the edge down here of that stirrup, the idea. That's up to you how much detail that uh, you do want to get in there. Maybe you see some of the girth strap and the back band here, and this you see some of that. You know, maybe there's a few little things hanging out there. Um... You know, this, just, just some stuff hanging there, which is good. You know, and, and again, I, I start to use, when I start to do the detail, I start to use this burnt sienna and blue and this small little brush here, and I can start uh, sketching just a little bit more of a sketching line, what I want to see. Sometimes I'll use that to... Uh, you know, define like his leg and stuff a little bit more there and uh, put some of those edges in, little marks. You know, I'm a real big advocate, uh, you know, when you're doing this, I'm going to add some more stuff here in just a second, but I really like, you know, there's beautiful Western painter, Jason Rich, and I started following him about seven, eight years ago, and um he just and he does these this magnificent colors and horses and and usually he touches a little light blue like this through the and it creates that little spark of color that is just amazing in the painting it creates this spark and you know i just noticed you know well once one of the first things i noticed and it was just like wow you know and so he will come through like all these things and areas and create some of these little sparks and of course it takes a lot more care and positioning than I do but it's on the shadow shadow side and you just create and you know it takes some of that blue back down over here it just works and it works really really well uh, so you know this is just nice stuff that you can do you know for your uh, for your painting, little things like this, little sparks of color. And that's what, uh, 
you know, we look for as artists, little ways to get more interest and stuff in here. And so I started applying this to flowers, to landscapes, to other things that I do. I started adding some of these sparks of color and boy, howdy, it really works. Now, I'm going to come up here, take some of this burnt sienna and blue, and I'm going to do this really simplistically, just the tip of this, this brush here. And uh, I'm going to put on just a little bit of a shadow here. Put on his rope. All good cowboys have to ride with that rope there. So the shadow. And then we'll take burnt sienna, yellow, touch of blue, and then some white. You can even just go to probably just real close to just the medium white so you could probably just use that too and uh, we'll create here just a, a little bit of the idea of his rope here right around and uh, maybe a bit more and usually what I'll do is I'll bring it kind of together like up onto the light side here with a few more strokes but I want to get that feeling of the of the swirl of it. And then I'll paint back out. Paint back out here some of the inside here. There and soften that out just a bit. And then sometimes what I'll do is I'll take my um my small bristle and you know if you want it to if you feel that gets a little too smooth and stuff in there and I'll go back and restate some things and I want to set this more at an angle here too so I want to come up it's but your small bristle will leave see these little fracture lines here too so that that works pretty nice that right there didn't work at all but <laughs> some, sometimes that uh, works pretty nice. I'll set this back at an angle like here. So I'll run this around a few times there like that to, to get that. And I know that kind of looks kind of funny, but then what we do is, and you can even use this bristle for that too, change your brush up because it's going to give you a different mark here. And we can start painting back out certain things that we that uh, will loosen it back up again here that we want. And we leave part of it up here. So let's just take some of this shadow right out there, loosen that up. And we had his pants there, which was more of a yellowish kind of color. We can bring that back up a bit here. So in other words, I'll paint, and then I'll paint the edges of some of the other stuff that I did back in through there. You know, I work a very, very, what's called a loose edge to the painting. Not a lot of detail to it too much, but just loose edges and stuff to what I want to do. Now, there, um, you know, you should have the, if you have it up here with the rope tie, you can put a little rope tie onto that. And uh, right up here by the light, we can hit that light again. You know, right up by the rope tie, just put some of that light on the rope down and around, like that. All this, and it's all just how much time you want to spend on this, but I don't want to get this too precise or perfect here. Just a bit there like that, so they can see some of the, the idea of the rope idea of it here and uh, and you you will most likely what you want to do is to keep it from getting stiff you go back and forth several times I'm gonna go one more time here with the light yellow in there by his paint by his chaps here his riding chaps and uh, push some of that in there you see that that's good maybe one more little dose of quick light this little bristle is kind of fun to paint with too. Changing up some of that brush is going to give you a different look. So, see, so you got that rope hanging there, and um, 
you can use this bristle too for because this is a bristle that I've taken. You've seen me do this before. I've taken it and I've shaved it down with a razor blade so that uh, you cut across it with a. You take a. Let me grab one here. Take a real soft razor blade and you just cut across it like that and take out some of the uh, the hair of it so it thin it narrows it down. So here's what it normally looks like and then here's one that I've narrowed down so you see it's a nice little uh, bristle for drawing it works wonderful for drawing and I like that so I'm going to take a bit of the light blue burnt sienna some of this just a light gray color over here with his we'll add a few little uh, little lines little you know, these could be the edge of his reins that he's holding here that are coming back down. Just little uh, straps and lines and stuff that are just going to give some more interest. And I'm not going to worry about being absolutely perfectly in in design here, with, but uh, putting on some of this. Maybe we'll go to a, so it shows up better. A little bit of burnt sienna and yellow and a touch of medium white. Lighter, because you can pull a few little lighter straps down here, like ideas of it. And then darker shadow, blue and uh, burnt sienna. You can even use that bit of the uh, um, red there to keep it more gray here. That works sometimes I'll Put this up a bit, but uh, maybe some extra little ropes, lines, stuff coming down off his saddle and stuff. You know, that all works. You can uh, use this to, to uh, put on some more details of his stirrups here. Maybe you have that. Maybe they're a, a metal stirrup with a lighter little gray edge there. Just some of that going on. Most of that's all going to be covered up by where he, his uh, chaps and stuff. You won't see it. It's on the other side. But we could lighten up maybe just a bit of his chaps here. Put that in. But that's all up to you is how much you want to uh, put across there. I want to lighten up the back edge of his saddle here again and reset some of that. So see, I just set a bump of that that kind of tan color a little bit to draw the edge. Very, very loose. That's what I like. You know, you might up here on the edge of the horse pick up a little bit of an idea. Maybe that's part of his reins here. You might pick up some of his reins up, you know, here, if you wanted, you could, you know, how much decoration that you're going to do. I'm going to keep this pretty simplistic. Um, and uh, Reynolds kept everything kind of simplistic. I like that. But you'll get some Western painters that will really get in quite a bit more going on into it. And, and there's that's good as well. And I do. I have others that I've put quite a bit of detail in into it. Let's just... That's too blue. Just coming through and just hitting a few little. That's too violet. I'll get it. <laughs> oh, it's horrible taking time off from your painting. And you'll lose some of your color sense while you're gone. That's not so good. But see, just, and people that know it, they just, you know, they'll just see some of the, uh, some of the parts and stuff here of the horse and and that works. I mean, I could add, you could add more here to this horse back here. I mean, you could add some saddlebags and stuff back here if you wanted to make that part of your, your horse here. Widen it out, get some saddlebags here. Take some, just some ideas of the, the shadows on there for those here. Just, uh, you know, that's all up to you. It's how much detail and stuff you want to do here. And see, I like painting over and and the lost edges and stuff like that. So 
you know, maybe uh, pick up this other little strap right there. Maybe just pick up some of that. Just see, just real sketchy an idea, and and this little shaved down bristle does really nice sketches as well, you know. So. Yeah, and it, it's all up to you. You know, I, I think, I, I don't think I'll put a, a nose band on that horse. The one that uh, I'm looking at, and yeah, I don't think I have. Yeah, the one that's right over there, um, that's right there. That one doesn't have a nose band on it either. So it's up to you whether or not you put that in. I might use this for just a few more little grasses, but then I'm going to think I'm going to keep this very very uh see this little edge here will make some real nice not quite like that I'll break that up a bit just some ideas of small grasses little bristles work great and then i also have this one that i show you in all of the landscapes that i make it makes fantastic you bend it out a little bit more get these wild hairs and you can use that to just put in a a few see it makes beautiful grasses and it's all up to you you know how you want to uh, to do that but this just makes you know just put a few wild hairs of grasses out there see and it just looks so nice makes it look like you know what you're doing here and uh, let's get some of that boy two brushes going at it <laughs> And if you get too much, like I hit that area there just a little bit too much, I'll take it into reverse. I'll take a little yellow and some burnt sienna right with that. And sometimes on some big paintings, I put the yellow on one side and burnt sienna and stuff like that onto the other side. And I'll go back and forth, and that works really well. See, so I'll put some burnt sienna on this side, some yellow. So I can go yellow, and then I can go shadow, see, back and forth. And I can work that back and forth like this, see, until I get the amount of depth that I want, you know, in, into the painting. So I can go shadows, and I can go highlights and soften back down. So when you take a big brush like that, that works really, really well. All kinds of neat little brush techniques and stuff that you can use. I'll add just a little bit more here, right out here. And... I like that. I like that, and I like that simplicity, simplicity of it and stuff there. Um, I could have, I could bring, you know, and I start looking compositionally wise, certain little things like, you know, maybe uh, his the front of his little chaps here need to come farther forward or something, and you can just put a little more color here to bring that to let that kind of happen. There, he's on the shadow side, but it does bring him, you know, just a touch more forward. But overall, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to leave it at that and just some of those grasses. And because when you're working grasses and you're doing stuff like that, you can get overworked really easy. In other words, you can, I mean, you can give it too much. You really can. And it's really easy to do that. So it's better to stop before you do that. So sorry about the length of this. It got a little long. And sorry about the, some of the the pain that I've had, in the, especially in the, uh, the last month or so in not being able to, to film and paint with you guys like I really like to. I'm almost back to 100%, and we'll we'll get back here and we'll do some. Uh, so I did a western. I've got a seascape and a landscape, and then back into some of our florals. I still, for those in the membership, I'm going to paint that other Australian shepherd that's been on hold that I drew all up that I have all ready to go. So I'll do that one as well. Um, oh, the other little thing I was looking at this. Do I want to add just a little bit more you know I have that real strong line here and I was looking at that this morning did I want to just take a simple just a and this is where I'll go to a small brush and do a little sketching here in other words just a, a thin or you know really loose and this is where you know just like you do detail and stuff like that up here you can do thin little bits of that to bring out that line see i'll bring out that plateau that mesa right out here a little bit more right out through here 
and maybe down and in and use that to sketch some some things like that so it brings that up a little bit more that's up to you but so sometimes into the back and i'll do that with trees or i'll do that you know this is fun to take some burnt sienna and touch back here and when you touch burnt sienna back there these are herefords so don't forget to to touch a little bit of the medium white back here too as well as they get those white faces and stuff so anyway fun little fun little western i hope you enjoyed it hope you got a few little techniques from it there's a lot of different ways and so when you're studying through my video some people go well you know yeah you did it different i, I do things different all the time i don't like to just say this is the way i paint i paint a thousand different ways i've liked that i've been painting for a long time since 1977 and I like to try all different kinds of things. I don't like to get myself stuck in just one way of doing stuff. I'm going to sign this painting. So I'm looking for my signing brush. I'm going to sign this painting. I'm going to call it done. And uh, hope you guys like it. Please um, please uh, subscribe down below if you haven't subscribed yet. And uh, make sure you click that like button. And if you do this favor, leave us a comment or something and help us promote the channel. We'd like to grow our channel. We're trying to grow our channel. And I want to start doing some more and more stuff with you guys and more and more looks. And if there's something you want to see, put it down there. I have a list. And I am I know it's sometimes it seems like I don't get to that list. But I'm working on it I, every time I work on it, okay? So we'll do some more. And we, want, we had some requests for some small like small seascapes and stuff and I thought oh those would be pretty see if we can get that done with like within an hour make a, a, a really neat impressionistic uh, uh, seascapes and stuff that might be a fun one to try next okay lots of stuff to do but make sure you click all those appropriate buttons down there and thanks a lot guys and a heart very heartfelt thank you for all of you that stuck with me this last month as I went through all of these issues and all of your prayers and everything you really your comments and your prayers and your good wishes just kept me going every day and I could read those on my tablet while while laid up but uh, thank you very very much and I'm going to keep painting for you and we'll make some more beautiful things okay thanks guys I'll see you on the next one